Good morning, sisters and brothers, and welcome to this morning's morning prayer. Today is Saturday, Saturday the 8th of January. And so let us pray as we begin this new day that God, in his grace, has granted us. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Your light springs up for the righteous, and all the peoples have seen your glory. Blessed are you, sovereign God, King of the nations. To you be praise and glory forever. From the rising of the sun to its setting, your name is proclaimed in all the world. As the sun of righteousness dawns in our hearts, anoint our lips with the seal of your spirit, that we may witness to your gospel and sing your praise in all the earth. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Amen. <clears throat> The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Above you the Holy One arises, and above you God's glory appears. Arise, shine out, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord is rising upon you. Though night still covers the earth and darkness the peoples, above you the Holy One arises, and above you God's glory appears. <clears throat> the nations will come to your light, and kings to your dawning brightness. Your gates will lie open continually, neither shut by day or by night. The sound of violence shall be heard no longer in your land or ruin and devastation within your borders. You will call your walls salvation and your gates praise. No more will the sun give you daylight, nor moonlight shine upon you. But the Lord will be your everlasting light. Your God will be your splendor. <clears throat> For you shall be called the, whole, the city of God, the dwelling of the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Above you the Holy One arises, and above you God's glory appears. <clears throat> o worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth tremble before him. Tell it out among the nations that the Lord is King. O worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Tell out his salvation from day to day. Let the whole earth tremble before him. Declare his glory among the nations and his wonders among all peoples. O oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth tremble before him. <clears throat> this is the Christ, the chosen of God, the one who will bring healing to the nations. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old <clears throat> to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, 
holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in the darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. <clears throat> Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. This is the Christ, the chosen of God, the one who will bring healing to the nations. <clears throat> Almighty God, in Christ you make all things new. Transform the poverty of our nature by the riches of your grace. And in the renewal of our lives, make known your heavenly glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> Our psalm this morning is Psalm number 46, Psalm 46, Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear though the earth be moved, and though the mountains tremble in the heart of the sea, though the waters rage and swell, and though the mountains quake at the towering seas. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place of the dwelling of the Most High. God is in the midst of her, <coughs> She shall, therefore, she shall not be moved. God shall help her at the break of day. The nations are in uproar and the kingdoms are shaken. But God utters his voice and the earth shall melt away. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Come and behold the works of the Lord. <clears throat> what destruction he has wrought upon the earth. He makes wars to cease in all the world. He shatters the bow and snaps the spear and burns the chariots in the fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. God of Jacob, <clears throat> when the earth shakes and the nations are in uproar, speak and let the storm be still through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears> hmm. <throat> frog in my throat this morning. <clears throat> All right, so <clears throat> Psalm 46, great, great psalm to meditate on, the, the, the psalm of God's protection, God's refuge, <clears throat> God's stronghold. Um, let me just read one of the meditation I have. Nothing is truly solid, trustworthy, and lasting but God. Nor can anything thwart him. Even the rage and assaults of others against God and his people and his cause will only be ultimately used by God for redemptive purposes. No matter how bleak the prospects seem, 
or how overwhelming the opposition, the city of God, the heavenly community and reality cannot be harmed, but can only triumph. Why? Because that reality and community are in God himself. Verse 7. There is no more proper response to really seeing God as he is, transcendent beyond all imagination, than to be still and adore him. To be still and know that he is God. <clears throat> Lord, to be still means not to be anxious or fretting or complaining or boasting. So show us who you are, your absolute power and infinite love for us until we are still in our souls. Amen. <clears throat> Okay, and our New Testament reading this morning is Matthew chapter 20. Matthew chapter 20. <clears throat> From verse 17 to 28. 17 to 28. <clears throat> Matthew twenty seventeen to 28. Now Jesus was going up to Jerusalem. On the way, he took the twelve aside and said to them, <clears throat> We are going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be delivered over to the chief priests and the teachers of the law. They will condemn him to death, and will hand him over to the, Galil to the Gentiles to be mocked and flogged and crucified. On the third day, he will, he will be raised to life. Then the mother of Zebedee's sons came to Jesus with her sons and, kneeling down, asked a favor of him. What, it is, you, what is it you want? Asked, he asked. She said, Grant that one of these two sons of mine may sit at your right hand and the other at your left in your kingdom. You don't know what you're asking, Jesus said to them. Can you drink the cup I am going to drink? We can, they answered. Jesus said to them, you will indeed drink from my cup. But to sit at my right hand or left is not for me to grant. These places belong to those for whom they have been prepared by my father. When the ten heard about this, they were indignant with the two brothers. Jesus called them together and said, You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their high officials exercise authority over them. Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first must be your slave. Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Amen. Okay, so... <clears throat> First, we have Jesus predicting his death. He's going to Jerusalem and he knows what's going to happen to him in Jerusalem. Jesus, Jesus did not shrink back from the task that God gave him, from his, from his purpose. He knew that going to Jerusalem, will, he, will be, he will be flogged, he will be killed. But he also knew that he will, be, he will be raised to life again. Um, God will raise him up. So he will, he will be flogged, he will die, but he will come back to life again. So that's the first bit. But then you have the mother of John and James and John who came to Jesus asking for power. 
for her, for her sons. It's a mother who's very ambitious for her children. She comes to them. <clears throat> she comes to Jesus and she, she is seeking power and authority for her sons. And Jesus, Jesus said, well, firstly, can you drink the cup that I am going to drink? And then the cup is the, is, is, is the, is the suffering, the ordeal, the, 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 yeah, the, 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 in the Old Testament, in fact, the cup was the divine wrath that is poured out by God upon those, uh, you know, upon, up, upon, upon sinners, upon those who reject God. And Jesus is using it here <clears throat> as, a, as a reference to suffering and death. Can you endure what I am going to endure? Of course, they don't quite understand. <clears throat> They say, yes, we can. And Jesus says, in fact, you will indeed um, drink from the cup. In other words, I am going to drink the big cup. But you will drink the little cup. You will indeed suffer. You will go through um, the ordeal that I am going through. In fact, I am going through the big ordeal, the big suffering. But you will suffer and you will die. But, he says... <clears throat> To sit at my right or my left is, 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 a, is, a, is the prerogative of the Father. Um, the Father has prepared those places for people that he chooses. I don't have any say over who sits at my right or my left. But the issue is not that, Jesus said as he goes on. The problem is about authority and about people who want power in our world. And Jesus takes them aside and said, if the fact is, you are my disciples. You must not seek power. You must not seek to be in authority because the kingdom of God is about people who are willing to serve, not people who, are, who want to rule. <clears throat> and so he points to himself. He says, the son of man is the example of this. I did not come into the world to be served, but to serve and to die. And he said, anyone who wants to follow me must have the same attitude, same servant attitude, attitude to, to serve and even if means be to die. So it's not the kingdom of God do, do not need people who want to seek, who are seeking power who are seeking fame, who are seeking um, um, accolades and religious, um, religious authority or, or any form of authority, frankly, in the church or in God's kingdom or even in the world. <clears throat> the world seeks after these things, says Jesus. Those who are in the kingdom of God do not seek to rule, but to serve. And that's a completely different attitude to the world. Um, and sisters and brothers, that is what um, should, um, should distinguish the church from the world. The church are people who are willing to serve, who are not seeking power, who are not seeking to, to rule, but seeking to serve. We only have one master, and our master is our servant, namely Jesus Christ. The rest of us, all of us, are servants in the kingdom of God. In fact, Jesus says, Jesus used the word slave. Whoever wants to be first must be your slave. Whoever wants to be master must first become a slave in the kingdom of God. That's the kingdom of God, sisters and brothers. It's an upside down kingdom. It's not the kingdom of this world. The kingdom of this world seeks power and, and, and to be rulers and to have to be in charge, the kingdom of God seeks to serve. The people in the kingdom of God says, how can I serve? What can I do to show my servant attitude in the kingdom? That's what the kingdom replies. In other words, um, James and John's mother should come to Jesus and say, Lord, how can my son serve you? 
What can they do to, to show how much they, they love you and serve you? Not, not, Lord, how can my sons rule with you? Yeah, that's not, that's not the, the desire of the people of the kingdom. It's not, not to rule, but to serve. And so the mother and James and John and all the disciples, they had it all wrong. They had it backwards. They thought the kingdom of God is like the kingdoms of this world. It's radically different. And so may God help us to serve, to be slave in the kingdom <coughs> of God, because that's what the king is for us himself. Amen. Let's pray. Our Father, we, we give you thanks for the new day that you've given us. We are grateful, O oh God, for your grace another day. And we thank you that you have called us to serve in your kingdom. And so, Lord, we pray that you'll give us attitudes of servanthood. Help us to be like Jesus, to come, who has come to serve and even to suffer. Lord, give us this same attitude, we pray. That in your kingdom we will seek to serve one another by serving you. Instead of seeking places of honor. Instead of seeking places of authority and places of leadership and rule. Help us Lord. That we will humble ourselves and be slaves in your kingdom. Give us this attitude we pray. Because we know that it's those who are servants who are lost, who will be first. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> um, just a, a prayer again for the epiphany. <clears throat> Our Father, as we remember the, the, the coming of the story of the wise men and the gifts they brought to the infant king. We pray that we, in our turn, may offer him the gold of obedience, the incense of lowliness, and the myrrh of devotion and dedication, and all for his honor and glory. Amen. <clears throat> so let's um let's pray for one another lord we pray for those especially those we are praying for in our own community we bring them to you today we pray for those who are <clears throat> who are sick especially in body and mind who are suffering pain and distress and discomfort we pray for those, Lord, who are undergoing treatment. We pray for Jane. Uh, we ask for your intervention in her situation. We pray, Lord, that you will use the medical professions to, to, to give her the right treatment so that, Lord, she can be made whole again. We pray the same for, for Deanne, and we ask, Lord, that you'll bring them to Bring her to healing and strength and health again. And Lord, all those <clears throat> who are suffering with cancer, we pray for them. We think of Ella's daughter, Wendy, who's suffering from cancer. We pray, Lord, for your mercy and grace upon her. And so, Lord, we ask for your grace in all these situations and for all those that are on our own hearts, family members, Friends, neighbors, we pray for them today. We pray for our community. We pray that the light of Jesus Christ will shine through us into the, the darkness of the community in which we live. So that, Lord, uh, people who in, our, in the darkness will have an epiphany of Jesus Christ. And they will see him as he is and like the wise men prostrate themselves before him as king and lord and give him the gift of their lives and their hearts lord we pray this 
In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> Be with us, Lord, in all our prayers and direct our way toward the attainment of salvation that among the changes and chances of this mortal life, we may always be defended by your gracious help through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Christ be with me, Christ within me, Christ behind me, Christ before me, Christ beside me, Christ to win me, Christ to comfort and restore me, Christ beneath me, Christ above me, Christ in quiet, Christ in danger, Christ in hearts of all that love me, Christ in mouth of friend and stranger. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. <clears throat> May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look kindly upon you and give you his peace and his all-sufficient grace to sustain you today, sisters and brothers, in all that you do and whatever you, wherever you go. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a blessed day, sisters and brothers. <clears throat>